Um, so let's do this. The recording is rolling. So, brothers and sisters in humanity, welcome to the Sovereign Human Show. Um, I'm George Hardwick. If you are tuning in for the first time, the Sovereign Human Show is all about how can we, as individuals and as a species, um, come into greater sovereignty. Uh, and so, typically, we explore in this show through four areas of a kind of framework of sovereignty that I put together: sense making. How do we make sense of the world so that we can um, know our place in it and not be the pawns in someone else's agenda? So sense-making, self-determination. How can we know ourselves and clear up what might be going on in our inner world so we can show up fully in the outer world? Self-expression. So once we've determined who we are, how are we going to express ourselves and our gifts and how are we then going to ground them in service? So sense-making, self-determination, self-expression and service are kind of four pillars of sovereignty, if you like. And... The reason I am super excited today um, is because I get to share a conversation, host a conversation with two beings, two souls who like have just lit my world up over the last year. Um, and today we weave together elements of what I believe to be the true nature of nature aligned technology, if you like, um, mm -hmm. that we as a species have taken a horrific wrong turning in some way, shape or form um, and have sort of dominate nature and as, as a result it's just turned into a horrific cluster fudge right and so the work of uh martin and tofa uh, for me it just at different ends of the historical spectrum if you like are bringing together something that i believe is vastly vastly important for us as a species to know and i don't exactly know where our conversation is going to go but as soon as i heard that tofa had a fascination with martin's work i was like i've got to just the thing i can't not do is try and make a conversation happen. So um, the fact <laughs> that we are here having this conversation um, is super fabulous. And um, as a way of kind of introducing our two guests, uh, I put together a few words that I will share now, and then we will dive into a conversation. So our first guest is a man who epitomizes what it is to know true wealth, Chris Topher Gardner, Mr. Bio Charisma himself. He tried the pro athlete thing, but there was just no spark. So he went from ashrams to Costa Rica to homesteading in the Ozarks, making his mark with natural homes and resonant domes and biochar rockets so food could be grown. He knows the heart opening power of resonant mojo balls and appreciates the possibility of ancient trees that grew so tall. Grounding all this through massage, showburger, cosmology and consciousness. When it comes to polymaths, Topher is right up there with the best. Next up, company's own flat earth fire brand and reset decoder. If you're not familiar, you best get to know that he brings two flat thumbs and a whole lot of Welsh charm. Forget the hidden hand, Martin's revealing the whole arm, Dis disarming mainstream history with explosive footage and imagery that lays bare the true fascist agenda quite vividly, turning buildings to bricklets and faking wars. Such an erasure of the past, we can only guess at the cause but they can't hide all the incredible finds that deserve to be known. Like Martin and Jason's expose on the Great Wall of Rome. And now we know our guests. We close with an opening prayer. May the greatest love for all beings ripple from our conversation every when, everywhere. May the vibe be high, may we enter the state of flow as we welcome Martin and Topher to the Sovereign Human Show. Yay. Awesome. Welcome, welcome, Good welcome. Good man. Good man. Good man, Joe. Uh, thanks. That was, uh, I'm on board with all that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Absolutely. The thing that I most love and appreciate about you both is, and I don't know if I've got the exact language right here, but it seems like you both come from a place of, and Tover, I've heard you say like that consciousness is first. Yeah. Right. It's all is, well, all is mind. And we are in, all is consciousness. We are eternal beings. Not, you yeah. know, yes. after, you know, we don't actually reside here per se. Uh, yes. This is our avatar reflection, if you like. Mm -hmm. and, and I really get the sense from both of you that like there's also a, like it's grounded in love, a quality of love that um, is all like is always the prime intention, if that's the right the right way of framing it. Well, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, Tom Campbell, a famous physicist, um, coins the term about two civilizations, one based on fear. OK, that's left alone to its own devices so everyone cheating on one another, everyone despising one another you know just fear-based society but another society based on love and understanding and basically they're left to their own devices and after 100 years how do you think the field-based society came on and guess which society we found ourselves in right fear-based society mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. all of these this is the key to it all you know they're all locked in fake fear 
and and you know none of us know you know we're all trying to make sense of what this consciousness actually is you know and our place in it and it, uh, you know i'm a firm believer in the cycle of reincarnation i think it's firmly locked in with the reset cycle of this place as well hmm. uh, yes you know yeah 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 so. i i would i would concur with that this is definitely a school this is mm -hmm. where we come to learn boundaries you know we, we're this etheric massive being that needs to learn what limitation and boundary actually is hmm. and this plane of existence the inertial plane of existence that we're in we get to experience inertia which is actually being more still <laughs> yeah, like, no, we discussed this. my girlfriend sat next to me we discussed this only two days ago how everything is in motion around yes. us everything but yeah we are still we are always just still always still, still. Yeah. yeah yeah we we are the fourth wall so for those mm -hmm. of you that are unaware of that term yeah. we identify with motion as it being us you we we identify with all this activity but for us to actually know activity our core has to be inactivity it actually has to be still. Well, this is some of some of the mystics sought this, like St. Francis, you know, was this inner stillness, this mm. this non-moving, you know, to be in presence yes. of that, you know, and all of this movement and this, you know, this whatever it is, this this fake ass copy that they gave us <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um becomes yeah. obvious to most once they see it, you know. But I'm guessing this guy yes. needed a long term meditate to meditate yeah. on it for some years before he came to the conclusion that some of us have about Wait, mm -hmm. it's it's fascinating yeah. you say that because uh, Trevor, I've heard you describe before like this this idea of flow states, mm -hmm. and that it's almost like that when we're truly in the zone, we're we're we're, we're not like, doing we're experiencing we're like we're living the stillness as, mm -hmm. as with stillness and motion as, as one um is i don't yeah. know if that's why we describe it but it kind of gets close to it right well that that's the depression that most athletes have when their career ends is that they don't have a highest high stakes enough thing going on in their life to induce the flow yeah. state yeah, and the flow that. state the flow state's very ironic because when you're in a flow state you're usually perfect you're as perfect as your form can get so true. but but the irony is you're not the one doing it yeah you know at that point you're in thy will you're in the jurisdiction of the creator and so the oversoul when you're yeah yeah exactly yeah. our higher self however you want to say it and then when you're in that flow and then you're snapped out of it and then you're back to your regular human self of making errors all the time you're like wait a minute how do i get back there <laughs> how do i actually get back to that perfection and that's the irony is that you literally have to get to a point where the little narrator in the mind clicks off and when that narrator yeah. clicks off you start to gain some distance between you and that narration and that's being the fourth wall is like actually when that narrator is doing whatever it's doing you're actually aware that you're the awareness witnessing the narrator, but you're mm -hmm. not the narrator. And that's what's ever present when you're in flow state. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so Martin, I'm curious, cause I'm, you know, I've heard Jason before talk about when he's reading a book, like he'll get into that kind of flow state. Yeah. And I'm curious to know how you experience that. What are some of the things that you're doing? Like I told you for you and I, perhaps there were times well, when uh, playing sport. What about for yourself? Pattern. Breaking pattern, getting out there. Like I'm seriously broke pattern at the moment because I'm in Texas. I'm in Houston, yeah. actually. Yeah. You know, I could not break pattern more. And what we found with this, with this new, it's an inner technology. Like you said, the answers are within. You know, to heal this whole place is within us. So mm -hmm. we found this technology of if you break pattern, it can't seem to keep a track on you. Then everything you do after that point is your manifestation. Exactly. I mean, we are bringing things into fruition within minutes. It is. Mm. And we've been talking about this Mandala effect, about like um, Roadrunner. Some say he said, meet me. Some say he said, beep, beep. We were discussing it in a show. The next day, we're in a random town. And on a train is a picture. It's got a picture of the Roadrunner going, meet, beep, beep. We're like, uh that's a yeah. not long, you know so it was just like there just like it was placed there for us you know it, and it find. is yeah it, it is it is placed there just for you 
because like Gurdjieff used to talk about this. Oh my when God! <laughs> How did you mention that? You know, <laughs> because this lady I... who knows Gurdjieff from a previous life. It's a big part of her life. Is Gurdjieff. Oh really? I'm joking. Well, I... Appreciate Cheryl. Say hi, yeah. Like Cheryl, come and come and come and get involved. Come and get involved. Yeah, come yeah. and get involved. Yeah. Hello, hello, Cheryl. How are you? This is front row shit seat on YouTube. She has a channel. She talks about you know these these things we talk about. Amazing. So. Well, let's get that shared there as well. Amazing. So, Beautiful. So, tell me, finish. and there's older souls here that help the younger ones um, evolve. And Gershiev yeah. is one. Um, you know, you can see it through the mystic line from all, going all the way back to India through Yogananda, who brought brought meditation and yoga to the West. And all of those technologies are bringing us closer to what we really are, which is consciousness. And mm -hmm. once you come to know that you're consciousness and you're not this avatar, you can change paradigms and then you can get into that flow state. You can get outside of the avatar mind like you were just talking about. And then once you get into that and these older mystic souls that are here, that's they're kind of teachers. They've learned how to you know be in this place they've done it over and over again and then there's a repeating history loop on them they'll come in they'll do very similar things yeah they change the realm again and then they go out recycle and come back in and mm -hmm. i only know that because i've met a few of them mm -hmm. and it, it was all coincidence i was in flow state and i've met a few of them mm -hmm. and i know where they are and i know and i can see the work they're doing and when i look back at what they did before it's the same exact thing mm -hmm. and so they're here with us trying to help us that that flow state you're talking about like that that actually drives me mental so what i do is like i i, I don't sit around watching youtube and stuff i look for inspiration so i get out in the world meet different people hear what they got to say and look at different stuff and just interpret it. Um, my experience without any you know preconceived notions or anybody else telling me anything let's see what i see i can make my own exactly judgment. Exactly. So, yeah. So I've been doing that and I'm breaking pattern. Um, and then we've been manifesting some fantastic stuff, guys, you know, but we're not we're doing it through the realm of love and not gain. We're doing it through. This is for a wider um, community, if you like. Although, you know, we got some reservations about the community thing, you know, because it takes away that individual sovereignty. You know, yes, when it does. the captains of our own ships and, you know, our own, right. you know, masters of our own universe, if you like. Um, and that sort of weakens that, I feel. Yeah. So, oh, but yeah. that's part of the agenda as well, isn't it? We've got so many things playing against consciousness, which is on lockdown. You know, I really do feel that they hijack consciousness. They have poisoned the well with toxicity of fear, wars on television. Everything is on television. Mm -hmm. um, yes. It's yeah. a long way back for most, for, you know, to come yeah. home. Back but it's the way to grow. It's a way to grow. She, she we... believes that all these icky people are put in here to show her us how to grow. And I feel as an, you know, without them, how would we even know to recognize, you know, this, this shitty person, you know, to be <laughs> it's able to... It's true. It is true. It's true. The, la the last uh, uh, interview I did, I, I named it the uh, Spiritual Black Swan. Because <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever read Nassim Tlaib, but he's emphatic that the black swan events actually shape our life much more than our m mundane routine. So like our life changed after nine 11, none of us saw nine 11. They're, they're vast pattern breaks. Like it's the, the kind of macro pattern breaks of yeah. what, in what you're talking about, these micro Perfect. pattern breaks on an individual level. Right. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Precisely. Yeah. yeah. And so Corona happened even though a bunch of us had a feeling that something was going to come, we didn't never saw it like that. And that was a huge pattern break. And that brings me back to like, I, I studied Gurdjieff pretty intensely and I pattern broke in my mid twenties for like three years where like, I literally would never take the same road twice. I, see. I would never talk to the same people at the same. And it was absolutely wonderful because the synchro mystic side of life oh. became ever present. It's synchromystic and that's the thing about the synchromystic life is that's that the synchromystic life proves jesus's words where jesus said what the the birds in the in the field they don't worry the the worms in the ground they don't worry but you aren't you the creation of god also and you're sitting here worrying about every last thing 
And yeah. once you start to trust and just do things different and pattern break, like you said, with that technology, the universe just hands you thing after thing. And it's always better than what you could have, what oh, you personally oh, thought. Yeah, yes. yeah. Indeed. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I have a whole treatise on surprises. I'm, I'm going to release it because I have this thing where like, yeah, you can get what you want, but let's be real. In your life, surprises have been better than what you've got, than what you want. Oh, sure. 100%. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, I can see it with my little girl and I can see it with little kids. Like kids, like we, our soul wants to be surprised. Yeah. It's our awesome. soul gets so much from a surprise. Yeah, you can go earn the money and buy the car you want or buy the house you want, but you think, eh. Yeah. But when, it, when it's unexpected and it's synchronistic and it's like it's almost a sign of care from the universe when you're it is. It's surprised magical. by something yeah. it's a magical yes. feeling and it's the ones you look back to and you remember oh my god i had such a wonderful surprise once it just i never yep. expected it it felt fantastic you know? and you'll notice the people that you really care about in life you're always wanting to surprise them oh yeah yeah but spontaneity is true spirituality i believe. yes so it is, it, it, I, it is. I, I completely concur I completely concur with that. Yeah, and you're so right with that last piece of like the ones you really care about. The as you say that, like Martin, like is that spontaneity? But there's also this like for me when I like you, you tell me you're referencing your daughter there. Like I was thinking back to sometimes with my kids where I'm like, they're like, Daddy, why are we driving here? And I'm like, I don't know. And I know we go to their like favorite soft play place or whatever it might be, and then we we get there and they're like, oh, we're going, and you can like they, their brains can't almost compute, and that's just like the, my heart just swells with love because I like I know how much they're like freaking out with joy right now so yeah, there's that man. and they'll remember that that's a yeah. golden moment for them it, it's, a, it's a kind of synergetic thing it's like there is a, a additive thing where like we're giving the love and also they're giving their and it's there's a totality of love that is much greater in that moment than than yeah. previously existed it's all about the vibration yes. brother and the ball about vibration vibration so, it really is on the vibration piece then, right? We've been talking about kind of flow states. Spontaneity is from love. Yeah, routine um, through fear, spontaneity through love. And mm, I agree this is that. true. Well, yeah. it, it comes to it comes what you're saying about that trust thing of like, uh, of, of tr t total trust is also total spontaneity of going, I feel called to go in this direction. I trust to go in that direction, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. because you um, know everything's going to be okay. Yeah. You yeah. just in, t intrinsically know nothing will happen. This is what you're got to do. You know, I've been having, since I've been in America this second time, I did the first time, I've been having a replicating deja vu. I mean, more times than I ever had in my previous um, years before this time, where I'm, you know, just certain things are said and I'm like, and the first thing that comes into my mind is, but me, that I said that before. I've done this, it's been happening before. Mm -hmm. And I'm having it like, I've had it multiple times in the last few weeks is this deja vu so i really do feel it's that I, to your own i've self. done all of this before it's a connection i to think your it own is self. i think it is and as i'm getting more spiritually in line with the more that we discover with this unveiling because we've been doing some um you know some unbelievable thinking here in um, houston with the, with, the, with the group i've got to salute your you know the work you've done the great the great wall of rome as I watched yeah, that well, video. she was and, there at the table when when we was just we was we we were just just going through it and then we just pieced it together and he was like, well, what's a Roman mile then? And then he was just like, and then it just like, what's the width of a Roman road? And wow. then we just, right, so it's Roman. It was spontaneous. Yeah. It was so, just spontaneously bubbled up, uh, and no then wow. everybody felt it. You felt the vibe about it, and then they just kept rolling with it, and all of that came out of that one moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was crazy good. So we, That's we awesome. have moments like that when we're sitting around the table thinking. There's a, a few good minds together. We got like a big convention coming off in a week's time. Come um, next week, we're going to be traveling all the way to Cal Southern California from Houston, a convoy of us. And then we're doing this so called archaics convention. And it's wonderful. Going be, it's going to be epic. We've got Max Egan, we've got um, Autodidactic Campbell. Yeah. He's, he's, he's yeah. Happy little bunny because he's in Florida at the moment, and because he's in America, he can't wipe the smile off his face. <laughs> mm -hmm. Where is he originally from? Australia. Yeah. Okay. But the Brisbane side, he's sort of really remote from civilization. I see. And he lives in a I dome. See. Somebody built a wonderful. Dome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, massive. My man, my man, <laughs> holding down yeah, the domes. Man. Yeah, he's doing it. Yeah. He's doing it.
Um, so that is that's going to be an epic meeting. Obviously, if you can get there, Salvi, I shall be here in the UK. Um, but also Logan from Decoding Your Reality, Joel, um, Toltec yeah, Shaman. Danny, who, who's, um, yep. we were with actually this morning or about an hour ago around the coffee table. Yep. Um, she's from... Danny from... Um, the Unfuckers. Breaking the Shackles. But, but, yes. Yeah, Unfuckers. But yeah, yeah, breaking yeah. the Shackles. But Unfuckers. Yeah, you got it. Nice. So yeah, we nice. just have a cup of coffee just now. Um, so yeah, we're, we're all going to go... We're gonna drop some big troops. I'm I'm gonna I've been working on something um with some of the best minds I know for the last month or so, penning it out. She's been number crunching and doing this stuff with me. And what we've come up, I'm gonna present that so call and then Mike got another convention or a meet a week after. It's my one. Our kegs is gonna be there, Max. Um nice. also didactic in Houston on the 28th. I got we we've uh, got the whole amazing and all of that so that's so happening so whenever you're watching this please get to these get to these meetings because there's some power in being there in person this is the yeah. best we can do as a substitute to gather here for this conversation yeah like it's not just a run of the mill the convention season thing going down here it's something else it's completely yeah. magical we're all doing this new technology we're all feeling love mm. um, real love it's you know about the we're it's shivering about the all the time we're getting goose pimples all right. the time with love goose, goosebumps they are the breadcrumbs of the soul that's when you know something yeah, yes you know is, is unfolding there yeah, so, so, so let's, Mar let's so, dive in yeah so Ma martin let y'all go hey, you want to talk about goosebumps and the whole the whole thing i've been admiring your work around fascies for quite a while yeah because i've i was exposed to wilhelm reich's work about 20 years ago yeah and then i started building his devices 18 years ago yeah, I've seen a photograph and, of one with bamboos. Is that correct? Uh, I've I've pyrolyzed bamboo. I actually I I had an effect, a weather effect, when I pyrolyzed the bamboo because yeah. it was essentially a, yeah. a faggot of bamboo. It was a fascist oh, of bamboo. Is, yeah. And I've been noticing this effect whenever I pyrolyze wood, depending on the the matrix or the geometry of the wood that I pyrolyze. Yes. It creates a different effect on the weather. No, it will do it. But, the trees are natural organ generators anyway. Definitely. Ooh. But this, you used a term called perfect nesting. Yes, indeed. Uh, okay. Crazy charge, yeah. Perfect, perfect nesting. I've been building organ accumulators for, I guess, since 2007. No, two thousand. yeah, since 2007. So this is a spherical, perfectly nested uh, orgone accumulator device where it's a five inch sphere. Internally, there's a four inch sphere, then yeah. there's a three inch sphere, then a Which two inch sphere. Yeah. Exactly. And the, the notion of perfect nesting, um, I really wanted to thank you for that terminology. Hmm. And I wanted to get into the fasces with you because Sure. The effects that we see from perfect nesting are are really un, like remarkable, mind blowing. Because, like, to give you an example, in in this very device, uh, this holds one liter of water. Hmm. When I've got it to resonate, I've poured out a liter and a half of water. Oh my god! Wow. So there's all these people within within my community that build organ accumulators. We're all all always experimenting with geometries. Yeah. Sure. And I just I just wanted to ask you, I wanted to get like to the real like meat of what what were they using a piezoelectric source in your mind? Was it like dude? Yeah, I just was it that, yeah. Was it like Dune where they were using like, you know, I, I always I always love the movie Dune because oh, why did you use that analogy. I used it myself, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah. Because yeah. that there's something to that with the change in the vibration and then changing the vibration into essentially a signal. Hmm. And when the way Wilhelm Reich explained his orgone accumulators, the, the specific one that I built that was like massively strong was a, his cloud buster. And yeah, I did yeah, the sure. cloud, yeah. I did the cloud buster with 12, three foot long copper pipes that were one inch in diameter. And then I had a 13th pipe. I had the, 
the Jesus pipe right in the middle. Then I had that in two gallons worth of organite. But what I did was at uh, the bottom of the organite, I actually spliced in an aluminum cable, a conduit. And then I had that running into a body of water. I'll do it. And at the at the bottom of all the copper pipes was uh, this type of quartz crystal. Yeah. A very clear quartz crystal. Yeah. And that thing, like, it was the rainy season in Costa Rica, and it literally just erased whatever was in the sky. Yeah. And what, what Wilhelm Reich talked about was he says organ accumulators – the same principle that Victor Schauberger talked yeah, about where no, no, it is, yeah. the the water, the signaling of the water, the water is actually signaling to absorb the highest energy in the atmosphere. Living water. And it whatever's in between it and the device gets evacuated. So it's not pushing, it's pulling. Because in nature, it's oh, it's yeah. In nature, the pulling componentry is is something like 400 times more powerful than the pushing. Like implosion, given the same volume, is much, much stronger than, than, than propulsion. So I'm just like, in, in listening to the few uh, videos that you've done on these fascies and seeing it, like the first time... I saw fascies under the context of making an orgone accumulator. I was like, dude, <laughs> they look like the same thing, except the fascies has sure. the bands, the bands on yeah. the outside. Right. Mm -hmm, exactly. But what, what I'm, what I'm trying to figure out is what is the energy source that induces the flow? <laughs> well, you could think on the lines of torsion field physics, and you know that, that it's creating a torus anyway, isn't it? Now, I seen someone build, uh, my friend built um, a Reich uh, cloudbuster in the back garden, and on a completely cloud, completely overcast day, there was just a circle of blue sky directly yes. above it. You know, yeah. that's my first sort of thought. Yeah, okay, this is a real thing. This shit works. Um, so I would think piezoelectric because it's going to need an energy source. Now, you can teach the, the essential thing about free energy, OK, is that all of this untold electrostatic potential is there trapped in the air, OK, uh, or tra trapped in the ether. And the, the trick was to get a resonation to tease it up. Yes, this is what yes. uh, Tesla was doing with the Tesla motor or the mm -hmm. Tesla motor was was actually magnets that created the uh, torsion fields. Um, just back to that again, that thing there. So it produces a litre and a half when you only put a litre in. So what I've noticed is clouds, all of this is a liquid medium, okay, what we're in now. And clouds can literally, I've seen them just appear out of a blue sky yes. and disappear into a blue sky. So the water's there all the time, obviously. So that is what? A grabbing a half a litre of water from the ether. I think when we get these to resonate, because we are running an electrical charge in them. Yes. Th this is not a device that is... Well, it's what the I would... bouncing it back and forth, the geometric shapes. It's causing this energy field, these waveforms. Right, That's... right. The, ne the nesting, what the nesting does, as far as we understand it, is all f electrical fields are electromagnetic. And when you have a nesting geometry, the nesting geometry actually gives you a balanced magnetic field. And when you have a balanced magnetic field, it's much easier you to achieve yeah. achieve resonance or coherence. Mm -hmm. And so whenever you make a liquid medium resonant, it's either going to produce protium, which we all call orgone. Or it's actually going to produce new water, which is just mm -hmm. more water. So it's 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 a rare thing because oddly enough, working on actual metal devices with electricity really made me tune in to the sky clock. Because I was noticing I could have all the conditions right to do it on one day, but it wouldn't be repeatable. And then I started to see that there were patterns, like if there were malefics that were prominent in the sky, 
if we were near cell phone towers, these were actually the to get coherence or resonance actually needed the field around it to be yeah. coherent. Wow. And that's oddly enough what <laughs> got me it got me into biochar because yeah, yeah. I I got into pyrolyzed carbon because pyrolyzed carbon has the highest diamagnetic field that known to man, which means that when you put this around an electrical device, it will completely cancel whatever the actual um, emission, electrical or magnetic emission is. Yeah. So if I if I go ahead and sheathe these devices with pyrolyzed carbon now they're not at the effect of their environment mm. ah. yeah so they, as you say all of this what immediately comes is like way back in the day of course we would have in tales of battles of old wizards doing battle with each other as well right right and i'm just wondering were they there to set the field like the energy field so that Definitely. the fascists and stuff could work so it's almost like that they were they were like the power source for the kind of antiquitech weaponry, and then you know the other people do their fighting. Yeah, I'm right. just wondering. There's something. It feels like there's something here around setting the field so that the energy weapons can work and all the healing yeah. can work. Why do they say charge when they go into battle? Charge. You know, this is supposed <laughs> to be the day of like you know knights of the round table, and they all wear. Um, or chain mail and you can buy chain mail today as electromagnetic protection yeah it's like, it's like a giant faraday cage around your body it is a faraday cage exactly that um a battery for example why is a battery called a battery when it's a cannon cannonry it's a battery you know these are having back to these technologies i do believe you know uh you know pre-reset the, the other thing that really struck me was in this um so for your i think it was your podcast your conversation with jorge mesa about the um, the wave forms that appeared to yes. be present on 9-11, right? And how right. they were using the weather conditions potentially to set up the field that would then make the directed energy weapons most effective. Um, yeah, it, you want to share very, a bit about that? Because I don't know, Martin, if you've come across this, like this blew my mind. It's a very well-known weapon technology to create what's called an electrostatic boundary zone. Yeah. So what you do is you you create a low pressure zone or a high pressure zone, and it's very well known that nature is in balance. So if you create an imbalance in nature, she's automatically creating a balanced field right next to it. The zone between the two is like that seedy little border town. <laughs> we all know about border towns. You know, there's always shenanigans going on in border towns. The static boundary between those two zones, that static is free potential. They wow. shouldn't call it they shouldn't call it static. They should call it dynamic. <laughs> I it took me forever to understand about electrostatics in um I think that was sort of a gravel for them to actually call static electricity static because it's actually not static electricity is the dynamic boundary zone between two two um opposingly oh, charged yeah. fields yeah. yeah yeah so what they did on 911 was hurricane aaron was essentially this massive electrostatic generator that came right off the coast of new york and then on the, its inverse just on the inside of the coast was a very high pressure zone and it was one of the clearest days yeah. ever in, in the Beautiful. united states all the way down from maine all the way down to florida i was down in florida that day like you could see everything in the sky and it was because of that massive high pressure zone and if you look at the boundary zone between where aaron was in the in the in the peak high pressure zone that was inland. It was, ran right through Manhattan. Wow. And that potential was then peaked. So Jorge Mesa was, was teaching me that the most destructive force in music is actually a resonant signal. Because whenever you have resonance, mathematically, you have more energy immediately in the system. And it can jump factors. And we found that with the mojos too, with the organ accumulators. If you accomplish resonance, 
what people are calling free energy yeah. is resonant. Yeah. But this is the key component. The people that have had this technology for a long time, they can make resonance be too high of an energy peak. And the way they'll do that is they'll hit things on three axes with different wavelengths. Mm -hmm. So they'll hit, they'll hit a structure that has a lot of mass with an elf wave, which is an extremely low frequency. And then they'll hit it with the, then that will be within an electrostatic field. And then they'll go hit it and hit it with a microwave. And each one of those potentiates the overall electrostatic charge oh. in the particulates that are already in resonance, they disassociate. So it's just that they lose, they lose inertia and just fly the fuck apart then. Is this you know, precisely? Yeah. It's it's literal it's literally dematerialization. Dematerialization. That's amazing. Yeah. I never knew about it's this because... in zone. This is a fascinating thing. It's crazy. Yeah, and that's why you could take a glass like an opera singer. Even yeah. my wife has a voice to do it where you can just resonate the glass with the frequency and it shatters. Yeah. Well, if you do that with enough amplitude, that all those little particulates will keep shattering and shattering and shattering and shattering. And then you get what's known as Judy Wood said is dustification. Yeah. Which I love the fact that she made up her own term for it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, on that of terms, I'm also just noting we began with this conversation of like how we are stillness in the motion. And then we've also got this idea that static is in fact dynamic. So there's yes. some, some, some nice interplays there as well. Yeah, nice um, definitely. With your um your orb, um, do you notice how coincidentally it looks like the orb, like with the orb and scepter, you know, the holy hand grenade right. all over alchemical depictions? We we joke about this all emphasis. the time. Yeah, we joke about this all the time. I this wonder. is the holy hand grenade. <laughs> I Look, love the fact. I think that this nesting. I th I think the stupers are doing nesting technology, or they were doing nesting. Oh you know, yeah, this, yeah for sure. Yeah. So yeah. I wonder, Martin, you, you know, you, I know in your the most recent video you put out about the four angels and the fascist synopsis. Yeah, well, that's um, a five year old video. I got right. you know, like, yeah. it's so, like, but you had the scepter and you got the orb. Is there some way where like, and I don't know if you were speculated on this in the video, but those two might be kind of like, um, you know, like the power source for the orb. Like, I'm going well, yeah, to give the scepter and the orb. Given Britain its power, OK, and what you yeah. find with all royals, wherever they are, they could be in Ethiopia. It doesn't even matter. They got an orb and a scepter. This is their power. And they say with Britain, it's the scepter dial, like yeah. if it's mm. some sort of vitrifying weapon, you know. And I, I really do think, you know, a lot of these old things, like even the Caduceus, a lot of these, you know, used by the health, uh, the National Health. All of these things, I think they're just harking back to electromagnetic technologies. They really do look like they are technology, and um, that is why. So, to Tofa, what is like from your kind of playing with these actual on a kind of physical basis? Is there any way in which the kind of this the orb and the scepter, like, so if the scepter is the kind of bundle of pipes yeah. or the fasci, right? And then we've got the orb is a, a perfectly nested resonant re or resonator. What, like, have you got a sense of what the roles might be of those two things? It yeah. actually the the orb is the perfect. Uh, it's called a receiver transmitter. Okay. It, it's it's a transceiver, and if you have a nesting environment, then it could also be an amplifier. So you would actually this is actually what is transmitting the signal that the fascies is making. Yeah. Huh. Because if you've seen the majority of all types of uh, high powered antennas all have a convex curve or a double it's convex a... curve. Uh -huh. And it's because it's something called point source energy. It's another way of being able to amplify a wave that you're trying to get to go to a specific point. It's about the or... direction. I'll add to you. It is. It's about that. Yeah. 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 And then when you have a sphere, so I build all different types of domes for clients. I build this type of dome, which is like a hemispherical dome, yeah, which is like very easy to live in because this is feminine. Because this receives this, this particular shape is a receiver. The dome. But the, the, this is a hemispherical dome. Let me be specific. Have you ever noticed with an egg, an egg is actually a hemispherical dome with a lancet arch dome on the top? 
Right. So the egg, the lancet arch domes are male. They actually project oh, energy. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. If you were to take a vesica Pisces, like draw a vesica Pisces, cut mm -hmm. it in half and spin it, that's the top of an egg. Yeah, it is. That's really cool. So, <laughs> so vet, so the whole thing with Victor Schauberger was he's like the egg shape is the hermetic mm. perfection because. You have the feminine, the the hemispherical feminine aspect, and then you have the male masculine coming together to make the child. Mm. And it, or, anything to be both sides of hemispheres of the mind. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You have the receiver transmitter. It's the receiver yeah. transmitter, and that's exactly what he would use as his per his healthy receiver transmitter. Like on the farms that he he had manicured, you essentially would have a, a a water tank where the male aspect, the down he would point the male aspect down into the ground. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I covered a bit of that. Yeah, for living water. Yeah, it is. So that, exactly. So yeah. it's it's like you know the Shiva Lingam entering the female exactly. earth. Yeah. And then you have the feminine part above ground that's actually receiving the solar energy. You always want the female to receive the male energy and you want the oh. male energy yeah. going into the female energy. And just by doing that, he would ensure that he would get 10x production on the land that that was affecting. Because this is effective signaling through geometry. And whenever you run water, another nice benefit of having the male and female balance like that, you run water in it, and it'll never get stale. Oh, no, never. no, no, no. I, I believe that's true. Yes, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It, never, it never gets stale. So, and I've built the life-size water tanks of all different shapes and sizes and everything. And when you make the egg shape, you can have, you can essentially keep the water pristine and alive with about one hundredth the energy that that it would take in a normal box or a cylinder type of water tank. Man, oh man. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Everyone should have that. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That could save a lot of people if they all had them in Africa for water production. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everywhere in the West, our water is even worse yeah. because everybody yeah. has the geriatric drugs in them and all all yeah. the different uh, pharmaceutical stuff is in the water table. So it's, it's very important. It's very important to have if you are getting water from the mains, having the ability to scrub the water mm. because the they're, living they're water. Sorry, they're freezing the food with same water, aren't they? Yes, they are. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Okay. Yeah, yeah. When, you say, when you say scrub the water, just walk us through like what you mean by that so that others listening could perhaps apply what you're suggesting. Like if you're in the city, it's really good to just get some some like I, I I'm not one of these people that's going to be militant about it because the water is actually going to react to your consciousness. Yes. And yes, I know yes. I know that sounds woo woo to people. But you could literally just take a cup and like hold it and just have the intention and, and gratitude near your heart. And it's going to change the structure of the water. Yeah. And if, if you want but some if, proof of that, you know, yeah. Beda Austin's work, Masaru Moto's work, you know, both of those exactly. you know, give you that. So, but if you want to be like, if you want, if like, say you're in a detox type of mode, like say you're trying to actually eliminate things from your system and you don't have a lot of money, you could distill your own water. You could just boil off your own water in a pressure cooker and have the, the drip line of, of your boiler go into another pot and that's distilled water. Mm -hmm. If you're will if you have a little bit of a budget, then you can buy like what's known as a pyrolyzed carbon filter or a um I don't know what they call it worldwide. I call it biochar. <laughs> it's this type of carbon, which is yeah, carbon filter. Car is, it, is it like yeah. activated charcoal? Is that what they would call it? A okay. activated, yeah. activated charcoal. Yeah. Oh. yeah. You don't want a regular carbon filter. A uh, regular carbon yeah. regular carbon filters do a decent job, but they don't have the right charge. But the second it's pyrolyzed, yeah. it's, it, it's activated carbon. It oh. actually has the charge that you need that will pick up all the free radicals out of the water. Hmm. Wow. So this is like, I, I, I can see both myself and Martin just like landing a lot of these things as we like 
concepts we've kind of touched on or played with, like something like, oh, I get that now, right? Martin, what are you kind of taking from this so far? Because you've you've spent so long immersed in the history of it to, to kind of come into the present and see how some of these things that I'm sure you've been absorbing naturally you know Topher is playing with and bringing you know grounding oh, fantastic what? yeah I, I'm I'm like I since I um reposted the um five-year-old video concerning a decode of uh fashies, it's like you know my internet's blown up again and everyone's suddenly interested the way they weren't the first time around yeah well man I've been blowing up your spot <laughs> Topher's probably said like <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, I, I uh, mentioned I mentioned you yesterday with Big Bear. Like, I'm just like I I, I cannot even tell you because th because I have direct experience with Wilhelm Reich's technology yeah. and I know it to be so. Same. You're the only one out there that has made the link with the historical narrative, and dude, it's fucking everywhere. Those fascies are everywhere yeah so we've had um more thoughts on the fascist this is brilliant actually because um this is not a done deal this is so much that we could learn from this and the whole idea is like you know i'm learning guys you know you tell me yeah. you know, i'll put it out there you just tell me what you know we'll put it all together and see what we come up with so that's what we've been doing um and it's not a done deal we got more thoughts on the fascist there's another sort of technologies and that it, another genre and mode of thinking ready to be unleashed on the public mm -hmm. concerning all of this so I, i'm i'm happy to learn anything i actually can concerning this now it, it's blowing have... my mind to think that you know this, this is a technology that is provable i've seen it yet not everyone is doing it you know so, so i, I... Well, it's a, it's a matter of consciousness. And so that's yeah. what I, I would like to talk to you about. Please. Hmm. Yeah. Because what we found when we were installing these at first was this was just as the 3G network was being implemented. So this is 2008. The iPhone had just came, came out. And what we noticed was this these systems that have structured water absolutely hated cell phones. And hated hated areas that had very very dense electromagnetic smog. Mm. And another thing that we noticed is whenever we would get these systems to resonate, we would have black choppers immediately in our vicinity. So we were creating a a clean spot in the electromagnetic smog that allowed immediate vectoring to our location. Wow! Like yeah. it was like. When I say immediate, like immediate vectoring. what is that because and, you were perhaps clearing radar signal or something from the area and they immediately were like, where's our radar signal that, going in the area? So I don't know enough about scalar physics mm. to say what it is, but from what I understand is the electromagnetic smog, it's like the the Batman with the Joker yeah, in it sure. from 2008. It yeah. essentially creates a in their meta space it creates a, a a 3d modeling space and whenever you have a very high frequency or resonant frequency it cleans it'll clean the electromagnetic smog and because they already have the entire model space you know mapped that it's very evident when a clean spot yeah, shows sure, up sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. what what comes as you say that is almost like in order to get a holographic image, you need an interference pattern, right? Precisely. So they've got this background wave of all the electromagnetic smog, and they're using that, I'm guessing, to create imagery and, and model the space. And then as soon as you remove one of those waveforms, immediately it's obvious, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Because yeah. oh, your work, because <laughs> these work on the longitudinal axis. These don't work in, like in normal electromagnetics. So we we were given the the bullshit electromagnetics, the destructive stuff. Yes. Because it actually does create a smog. It does create so much interference that it's kind of antithetical to life. Yeah. The the tech that I'm thinking that the people that had the Roman fasces and that implemented these these uh systematic uh city sinkings and city burnings and all the rest of it 
they have the longitudinal aspect of it, which is yeah. the life giving aspect, the all all the different things that are actually exactly <laughs> the way nature works. Exactly. And the that. way I explain it to people is if you've ever been surfing, when you're surfing, you're on the top of the sine wave. But what's actually making the sine wave is a longitudinal wave that's a corkscrew. Yeah. There's a Amplitude. literal there there's a line on a separate axis yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Keep, right. that's keeping you topside. Yeah. So that's what's known as a scalar wave. As far as I understand it, like I said, I'm not a, a, a pure well, she expert. She talks a bit about scalar waves. She thinks they come upwardly, um, and definitely connected with water, moving water, uh, generates a lot of scalar. They come up with the different nodes on the planet. There's so we, we just went along Route 66 a couple of weeks ago, which is, I, I literally uh, um, downloaded the ley line maps for America, for North America. And oh. there's one goes straight through Houston where we are now, and just all the way to San Diego. And we was on Route 66, and it literally all of the communities along there were thriving. And as soon as we went off that, everything went really, really downhill. And um, mm -hmm. everything was thriving. There, there was beautiful, wasn't it beautiful? And you could feel uh, the the energy, the high energy when you were going through it. So I think they put these things on, you know, especially with the old British churches and stuff. I think they put them on a nodal points for this yes. technology, you know, to enhance it, you know, and this amplitude. So basically to amp it up, you know, if you get it to fascism, you want oh. it to amp it up. They find the same material to the to the vibration. And then this thing's just and it's about this directionalization, like you said, and it's not so, a easy science, but they did it in the past. No problem. I, I wonder, as you've been saying that, Martin, you, you mentioned the ley lines, right? And so, Sophie, I'd love to get your take on this as well. Um, I asked a question earlier about the different qualities of the scepter and the orb, right? Yeah. Here in Cornwall, where I live in the UK, you've got the Michael and the Mary line, which are the two, yeah, sure. two very big, uh, Martin, I'm sure you're aware of them, two kind of major energy ley lines that kind of spiral around each other going across the country. Mm -hmm. And so the Michael line is the kind of masculine energy. Yeah. And Mary line is the feminine energy. And obviously at various points, they will meet. Like, they, like, they cross at Glastonbury Tour, for example. Well, I was uh, uh, there doing a ceremony one year ago, cleansing right. the Michael line. So I'm, I guess I'm just wondering whether, for example, maybe the scepter is about working with the masculine earth energies and, and, and then the and orb is about... Well, you, you could be onto something. So yeah, I, just, I guess I'm wondering whether there's something in that. And um, and I, I also know that whenever in, in pictograms, they symbolise the different water energies... One is a kind of spiral, and then the other is like a line going like yeah. that. Uh, oh, so Tofu's got his, his dowsing rods there. Um, so, oh, no. so maybe, and I'm only theorizing here. Yeah. So I douse my, my my clients' properties to find the ley lines, the dragon paths. Mm. Also to find if there's been burials there, to find where there's water lines, where there's spring. And depending on what is actually in the land, the these rods will act differently. And one of my teachers with the with the rods, because you can do this with anything. These rods are really nice because they well, I've used coat hangers and did yeah. exactly. Yeah, these are really nice because they will freely move. Yeah, nice. Like there, there's actually like a little. It, it's a. Once again, you have a nesting effect. You have a cylinder that's yeah, actually sure. has, actually has the rod in. Yeah. So, but what I've heard and seen, I haven't done it um, so much, but there is a direct connection in the blue zones of people that use rods to walk with, even though they're perfectly healthy. And as a massage therapist, I know this because our hands have chakras. Yep, and yep. so a lot of times when I'm teaching people how to douse, I have to clear their hands because the hands carry a lot of static. And so imagine if if you're a wizard or you're a field general and you have one of these these rods that are have been charged yeah. completely and then you can come to the battlefield yeah. and actually then plant mm. with with yes. your rod the field right marshals where, the general's exactly. baton the baton the general's right baton. Yeah. right where let's say there's a nexus point between a yeah. ley line and a dragon path 
Yeah. Then, then you have a hymn or you know a note that yeah. you can then project, like in Dune. And then the guy that's holding the fascies is just like, yeah, it's on. Yeah. Huh. Yes. Yeah. It, you can translate that you, intention and the sound carries because, it as well. One of the easiest ways to clear a field for somebody is to get them to walk on the ground barefoot with their hands on the ground. We call it crabbing. Yeah. Because all your your palms of your hands and the and your soles of your feet are all engaging with the ground. Well, if you have a rod that is semi-conductive, which a lot of wood, a lot of people don't know is conductive, yep. especially if it's heartwood. Yeah. And you're able to to hold it and make contact with the ground. Now you're you're much more of a circuit within the system. Oh. Huh. Mm. There's so much in that. And I know Martin, you've mentioned before the outfits that people wore in antiquity, right? Mm. And um, I can't remember if it was one of your videos, but they did this experiment with the you know the Dutch wooden clogs. Yeah, sure and showing that the wooden clogs would conduct a charge mm -hmm. from the ground mm -hmm. so that yeah. you would be grounding automatically as you walked with your clogs. And so, for, of course, as you walk with your wooden yeah. walking stick, you'd be conduct, you'd be clearing your hand chakras as you go as well. Yeah, you would. Yeah. Oh. That's why they've done it. Yeah, so you're definitely onto something there, Christopher. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And the magic wand. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's a real technology. You know, people laugh at me. Well, I shouldn't say they laugh at me because my clients that hire me, uh, let's just say they have doubt. And then we'll go and do their property. And then I'll say, hey, look, I'll hand these off to you. Yeah. Like here, I'm not magical. <laughs> look, you do it. You walk, you see, and they'll they'll see it. They'll walk over, let's say, a nexus point, and the, this will just start to spin yeah. incessantly. And they're like, what is going on? And I'm like, that is the telluric currents of the ground. Yeah. Or that is, you know, a, a vortex that's trying to pull water up from the ground. Indeed. Or, or this is a burial site. And depending on where you hold it on your body, will let you know what the actual energy is. Because we are the Maseroth, like our body, we are the Zodiac man. So depending on where we have this in relation to our heart, relative to our throat, relative to our hips, yeah, you know, it tells you everything. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing is I think this whole technology was very in tune with just the natural world. Yes. That's why it was so powerful. Yeah. It's like we see the the amount of force that's in these hurricanes even though i think most most you know weather is modified now if it was naturally occurring there's still so much juice that's in in nature mm. and the the harnessing of nature has like it not any of this solar bullshit or wind no. power or anything there there's literally limitless energy yeah. to it it's just a matter of consciousness to be able to tune into what it actually what I what is the agree i think that's the, why I, yeah sorry yeah what's the most appropriate way to use it yeah well i'm wondering whether with this um awakening that everyone's getting really smart all of a sudden i'm wondering um antiquitech seems to be offline now um, but I'm wondering if we do reach a certain stage, whether Antiquitech will become active again. For those listeners who may be new to that phrase, do you want to just land what and you, you consider Antiquitech to be? Um, okay, so if you can imagine, say, well, they say churches are places of worship, don't they, where you go to worship. But we think, you know, that they just found these buildings after a reset, repurposed them, found these organs, again, with the organite technology, organs in these churches, and they gave off a vibrational quality. So what, what I proposed was that um, in this, what you might call golden era, or I call the golden age of Tataria or whatever, um, this place was held in some sort of um, charmed status where the these vibrational qualities would affect um, mankind womankind nature as a response and this place was literally scintillating it was mm. fantastic and since then this whole thing's come offline it's the fall of man something happened really bad 
Mm. Um, but the Antiqua Tech is still there in place. Some of it they have tried to, to you know, dismantle a bit of it in wars, but it's mm -hmm. still there. Um, so I'm wondering as this um, event is coming, and you know, there's something afoot. It's definitely something to do with the sun. Mm. Um, whether or not, as consciousness, um, you know, comes more in aligned. Um, whether or not antiqua tech because I, I i can't help thinking that, that this this technology was to preserve um from resets yeah. um some sort of protective dome if you like from resets the other thing tofer i know that you've mentioned in your conversation with stellium and others like this idea that we went from the kind of gigantic yes yeah and it's almost we like literally it's a step down system yes so there we the are way the way I learned Ayurvedic medicine in the Yuga system is the Satya Yuga, which is the golden age, is is the volume of, say, the largest dome here. Hmm. We're in the Iron Age. <laughs> Look at the difference in the volume. Yeah, okay. Oh. And what so the, conscious, of what our consciousness might be It's all of it. it. Yep. It's yep. the yep. scale. Yep. Because yes. any, any biologist will tell you the organism fits the terrarium you put it in. Huh. Yeah, so like the when, fish grow into the volume of the tank. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Stellium Seven, like when he shows you that that mountain in in Spain that was yeah. was an elephant, <laughs> it, it's impossible. It, I don't care what anybody tells me. Statistically, it's impossible. You see something that looks like an ear of an elephant, and then you go and spelunk in it, and they go ahead and use lidar, and lidar the entire canal that they go in. And it's the fucking ear of an elephant. Yeah. It's exactly the same shape as it should be. It's just a fr like fractals larger, right? It is the same size. It's the same shape, just yeah. a different scale. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they found cedar trees that are 70 miles long, dude. And I know, I know in my heart of hearts, nobody can tell me different. Yeah. The very first time I saw Avatar and the home tree went down. Yeah. yeah. That that yeah. triggered that triggered a genetic memory. Like a genetic memory in me, yeah. and I was a I was a puddle. I was a mess for like thirty minutes after the movie, and my friends were like, "Yeah, it was a good movie, dude." But come on, like <laughs> no, I'm yeah. like, no, yeah. dude, you don't understand. That happened. Yeah, that happened, and I had I was with a I was with a a psychic and an intuitive person that I trust a lot. In the first time we saw Lord of the Rings in the movie theater, he was like, dude, this is this isn't yeah, <laughs> this isn't fiction. Yeah. Th yeah. This happened. It's a documentary. <laughs> yeah. Like he's like, no, this happened. And the more we know about art, art imitates life. You know, the most open we get where we're in the moment and we're in the flow state, and we think that we're having this this unique novel experience most of the time we're we're actually just resonating with something that's already yeah. occurred yeah. or yes. is yes 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 100 percent. remembering and that yeah, yeah. and yeah. so man like dude i know for like when i i was being taught by very humble people that really knew their shit when it came to the yuga cycles and i was always confused because I was learning this stuff in the late nineties and then like everything from 2010 on was like, Oh, well, we're going from the, the iron age into the bronze age. And I'm like, yeah. no, 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 no. The way I remember it is entropy. You go from the golden age down to the silver age, down to the bronze age, yeah. and then to the iron age. And then it resets. And then you're back at the golden age. Is that almost like the, the vortex? The vortex goes poof, and it's, it, it then kind of implodes out back into the. It, exactly. And that's what, and I don't understand, like now in the new age, people are like, no, we're entering the age of Aquarius and we're going into the, the broad. No, 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 no. We're in a state of entropy. This particular system is as small as it gets right now. Yeah. And, and, and it collapses. It collapses. Maybe it's a mud flood. Maybe things, you know, there's liquefaction everywhere. And then the outliers are here for when the golden age kicks in. And then all the potentials are at their maximum. 
right now the potentials are at their minimum. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the, the technology, like we see some of these buildings that I know are thousands of years old. But they were probably activated when the actual atmosphere and the potentials were so much greater. Exactly. When the high, higher electromagnetic uh, potential after uh, the reset anyway, because of the nature of compression. Precisely. You know, this, yeah. This vortex thing you just, you know, everything is in nature is responding to this vortex. The stars do a circle like they're going down exactly. a level above us and animals mm -hmm. will turn around on the torus before they lay down and the circle dances and the yes. dervishes doing the spiral dance, you know, and, mm -hmm. and all, all indigenous peoples have got a native ring dance where they yes. literally feel great when they're dancing on the torus, you know, yes. around this plug hole, around this spiral. It's going definitely down. yeah i mean yeah. i've always been obsessed with spirals because i w i played american football in the football the tighter the spiral mm. the further the ball goes the easier it goes and so we actually had statistics on spin rate and like when i would punt a ball if i got a really tight spiral on it i could use so much less force but because it was spinning at such a, a such an rpm the RPMs actually determine the distance, not really? the actual force put into it. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Free so I've been, <laughs> yeah, I, I've been obsessed with this stuff with arcs and, and vortexes forever because I've been like, it was actually a practical thing for me in, in mm. my, in my art, in my sport. So like what I'm, I wanted to ask you, have you come across any artifacts of fascists? Like, have you come across, like, have you, has anybody in Europe, like, does anybody actually own a fascist? Like, have we seen a, a, a Roman fascist in real time? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, we got fascists like the Magneto in microwave ovens in the modern day, you know, the technology yes. is there. Um, I've never seen an actual fasces and libris from the ancient classical world in any form. No, only in depictions, alchemical depictions, um, you know, or statues with, say, Washington holding a giant fasces. Or Dude, that one of Washington standard. holding that fasces, that thing is massive. Yeah, it, it, that it looks more like a Gatling gun than anything. It does. Yeah. Um, and, and I noticed, you know, if you look at Congress, they have, um, you know, a fascia's either side, but they're two opposed. They have um, the laurel leaf in an S, you know, the mm -hmm. binding, and they're two opposing, you know, two opposing Tauruses. It's all about these magnets and open south, especially yes. what you were saying with the inertia earlier. They're in a nuclear power plant. What do you mean? Fascia's. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, uranium rods as well the uh, apparently in nuclear power station are identical to a fascist mm -hmm. yeah they are just are rods. they are they really is it really nuclear power or is it you know are they just some kind of they're heating up and, they're, and they're generating steam yeah. and this is the thing with like you know radiance but yeah but it, i think i think radiating. the steam generators though are for weather manipulation i oh, think yeah, that probably. you might be actually right because the studies that we've done in the southern part of the united states and where you guys are in houston going up into louisiana and across into mississippi there are more clouds generated through through actual power production yeah. and what we've actually found is um in the over unity energy world the power plants don't really produce any energy anyway what they're doing is they're signaling, they're sending signals down the down the conductors <laughs> and they're conducting and that signal allows the meter that's on every building to convert the load into electricity. Amazing. I believe that's there, true. We there isn't, so, oh, go on, sorry. There isn't electrons flowing down no. the, these conduit no. or the, these conductors. Well, we and know so it's all bullshit anyway. They got free energy. We were discussing why te Texas right, has got the biggest oil um, underneath it of anywhere, right? Yeah, yes. all they're doing now is putting these absolutely humongous wind turbines up everywhere. Thousands yeah. and thousands. So we were trying to work out, like, you know, they, they're probably burning electric off. You know, they're probably just making too much. They got free energy anyway. So what are these wind yes. turbines? 
but they're like cutting off the interstate to get these things in place. There's a massive footprint to them, and they're literally millions each. Um, that's where they're making the money. They don't give a fuck about what these things do actually do. They just want to sell them and get them up, and that's where they're making the money because there's literally yeah. thousands of them out there. D so, disaster disaster capitalism them. needs things to fail. Yeah. And so we've been in a disaster capitalism model for at least, you know, 50 years. Yeah. And so whether it's a war creating the disaster, oh, a God-given hurricane creating disaster, whatever's creating disaster brings the profit. And so now all the energy systems that they're popularizing are all built to fail. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. that ensures that government will have a say in things. They put these wind turbines up in Nicaragua and Costa Rica, where I lived for 15 years. They were a horrific failure. Nobody can work on them. They kill yeah. more, more wildlife than you can ever imagine. And their return on investment, they're not, they don't even create enough energy to replace what it took to make each one of them. Yeah. They're selling them. And what and what I try and tell people, because I do a lot of building for off-grid people. I hold a gallon of gasoline and a gallon of gasoline weighs about eight pounds. And I say, this eight pounds is, is, is the equivalent of eight kilowatts. Show me an eight kilowatt battery and see if you can pick it up. Hmm. Good one. Because when it comes down to embodied energy, it's about the weight I'm like, this is eight kilowatts. This is the equivalent to eight kilowatts, 7.6 kilowatts. Hmm. Show me a 7.6 kilowatt battery. <laughs> it will weigh 120 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be massive. And it will die. <laughs> it yeah, won't, it will die. It, it, it's so much less reliable than just pouring a gallon of gasoline into a decent Honda generator. Yeah. And a Honda generator will last forever if you put oil in it. Like it will not die. Better has to change. Yeah. Not run on gas. What's that? So, no, well, we just been, you know, some of the stuff that we've been thinking about concerning, you know, concerning this whole reset business and stuff. And we feel that, you know, that the battery is running out. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. It is. And it needs topping up, and it's the reset, the top sitter. Yeah, it definitely is. It It's like in. So this is the beautiful thing when you actually see like I have a little bit of of knowledge and experience with actually revitalizing batteries. And <laughs> it's very funny because when you revitalize a battery, you actually have to clean the mud out of it. Right. Because the ent entire time the power is going from one from, you know, the cathode to the anode cathode to the anode. There's a sludge that's created. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder what the mud flood could be. <laughs> right. Uh... And, and uh, listen to Jason Ooh. saying about how the, the kind of the flood comes up from the earth, right? So yeah, yeah. it's being expelled and cleaned out. So you know, so do you know how you revitalize a battery? Change the water or top change the water. With no, that doesn't that doesn't revitalize the battery. This is after the the electrolyte in Eat. the battery. And, and the plates have already corroded. Okay. Uh, heat it up? No. No. No, you use something called back EMF. It's, implo it's electrical implosion. So it's exactly what Tesla talked about. It's yeah. what Steinmetz talked about. It's where whenever you create a spark gap, nature abhors a vacuum. That's why... Yeah. I'm so glad the space smith is dying because there's no such thing yeah. as a vacuum. There's nothing in nature that produces vacuum. So, so for those of you out there that don't know, cavitation is whenever you have a flow of any fluid or electricity moving in one direction, and then it's truncated. Yeah. When it truncates, there's something in the whole field of existence that's like, no, you're supposed to be on the other side. And now there's a gap and then the entire universe collapses into it to fill the gap. And you can do this with electricity. And when you do that with electricity, with transistors, 
you'll have the energy moving and it's just like a it's a, it's just like a, a leaf valve it cuts the energy the energy cuts and then on the other side there's a gap and then there'll be a charge that condenses if you can collect that charge that condenses there and funnel that into the plates of the battery okay. all of the sulfation on the battery goes away Wow. And guess what that guess what that sulfation looks like? It looks like mud. No, don't. It is mud. It uh, is mud. Uh, no man, it's mind blowing. It is mud. And so this is the beautiful thing about it. People have weighed the plates. So you'll have all these people that are into electrolysis. Yeah. And be like, My "Oh, that's just yeah. That's just the deterioration of the plate. That's just the inherent nickel and iron that's in the metal and blah, 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 blah. They'll weigh the actual metal. The metal hasn't changed weight. Yeah. But yet you'll actually have you all of this, all out. this, all yeah. this. This realm when it resets. There's all this electrostatic, we're calling, I'll call it dynamic potential. Yeah. The dynamic potential hits because like you said, the battery's running low. The cathode and the anode are dimming. Like they're saying, oh, there's solar dimming right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we're at the end of a cycle. Yeah. Dimming, dimming, dimming. It collapses. The the it <laughs> the plates are desulfated. <laughs> You end up having certain areas of the realm that are covered with this "quote unquote" mud. You have other areas of yeah. the realm that shake. So is and they they sink. Oh, and ah, go go go! You, I was thinking, is, that, is the phoenix that Jason talks about something to do with this spark gap, this truncation of the of the current? That, is it that's that's exactly what all the stuff that I've heard from Jason, and I want to talk to him about it because. When he describes it, like literally I have Phoenix in my life everywhere. The people that make the shirts, Phoenix fight gear. Mm -hmm. I have had Phoenix symbolism in my life. I mean, I, I've died and been come back. Like yeah. it's, it's a theme in my life. And the, there is this thing with bioelectricity. This realm is always in balance. And so as it seems like the imbalance is getting too much, I really think the Phoenix event is literally just the tripwire system within within the terrarium, within within the yeah. plane of inertia. It comes in and it just goes, okay. It has here to happen. We go. It's told it. Yeah, it's in the data. It has to happen. It's part of the, the data. It has, to, it has, it has to, to happen. And I think this is where consciousness comes back into it as well. Um, yes. We, yeah. you know, um, what, down at um, Turf, you were showing us your dowsing rods. Down here in Cornwall was the home of one of the UK's most famous dowsers, a guy called Hamish Miller. Um, and he, there's an old DVD of his that I watched where he doused the energy field of a tree, mm -hmm. then went and gave it, literally gave the tree a big hug and sent it some love, then doused the energy field again and it had grown, it had expanded. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, that like as the phoenix comes in to reset and clean the cathodes and like clean the battery so to speak if we are in harmonic resonance of love then we get like that's we get upgraded in that sense or we get reset in the fear mode like yeah. It's yeah yeah we light up man yeah yeah that in a jar that's us you got it man my, my entire my entire life i i don't have like the christian death wish of like Oh, I want to die so I can like <laughs> sit at the right hand of God my entire eternity. But my entire life, I've kind of known I've, I, I, as a little kid, I would see these like epic electrical battles between red and blue light. Huh. Cause I lived in like the lightning capital of the world. And I was just like, I know, I know that there's this massive plasma thing that's going to happen. It has to happen. And I've been so excited for it. Yep. Yeah, same. Can't I've wait. been so excited for it because, you know, whether the body perishes or not is immaterial. It's literally immaterial. We are eternal souls. Our bodies are avatars. No, yeah. yeah. And so for me, it's just like, hey, it, resonating at, at the love and just trusting once again, 
you're in the moment, you're in the spontaneous genius of God at that point, and you're going to be exactly where you're supposed to yes. be yes, to yes. experience exactly what you're supposed to experience. That trust. Like no, I have faith totally. that all will be well. It's the last words in the book, A Pitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, is <laughs> everything's going to be all right. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I've, so I've got to say that, that you're in the spontaneous genius of God. Yes. I, I've always, I, I've known that like since really dissecting what the zone is, is like the zone is always spontaneous. You can't play, you can't plan for it. No. no. It's spontaneous and it's genius and yes. it's not you doing it. So if it's not it's you doing it, genius. it has to be God. Yeah. It's always genius. It's like yeah. you say it. It's like, that was genius. Wow. Yes. You know, so, ah. yeah. and that's the, e that's the ego's trip is like, how do I re repeat that genius is like uh you dipshit you weren't there to begin with <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and cheryl thank you so much for bringing yeah, through yeah. The, the, the spontaneous you know for mentioning spontaneous right because it yeah. like yeah. it brings through the resonance of what topa just said about being in the spontaneous genius of god like just to see how that flow has been present for all of us um through this conversation and in oh, a yes. love vibration we have a lot of power here to affect others around us when we're in a fear mode we kind of suck energy from those around us mm. but when we're in Definitely. a love vibration we feed others energy yep. and it expands and so i've worked hard at getting out of fear vibration and into a love vibration and try to break pattern and i've been working on that for a long time in my life too mm. and so I, and i'm at martin he's doing the same thing so now we're just kind of working together and doing a lot of things it's really interesting. And it was so nice to meet you guys. I was fascinated by both of you. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. It's very nice you also. Yeah. Yeah. It's been wonderful. Um, so we're we're coming up on about, I don't know, hour and 20 minutes or so. I don't know yeah. how long you guys have got, how long you want to go for. I, um I, I can keep going. <laughs> right. Uh, my heart is needing a bit of like <laughs> it's super expanded there. I guess do, for either of you, are there any questions that are really alive? Um I I've really loved how there's been this weave of consciousness um, and flow states as well. Things that I just feel like are they're the they're the real moments of life that are meaningful. Yes, right? um, definitely. And so to have these present for us as well. What as we're in this state, are there any questions that are really alive for either of you? Can I ask one question? Yes. Um, I have a very small channel, but it's really just about talking to other people that um, carry um, a specific vibration because I want to put that out into my channel would both of you or one of you um come just do a small talk with me on my channel sure. too 100 yeah 100%. no i love that yeah she's had jason on the channel she's had um tom tom campbell on the channel oh very good nice. very good nice. i met tom campbell six years ago and he was the inspiration for me doing some inner work and getting rid of fear because i was like well maybe he's right you know he he is very smart and he has a lot of things mm. going on and when I started doing the inner work and getting rid of the fears that I had, I noticed that my reality started shifting in a big way and my whole yes. life changed. Mm. So I said, okay, there's something to this. You know, I don't right. like to take anybody's word for things. I, I like to gather my own evidence Good. for my experiences and learn that way because I can't take somebody else's word because then it creates belief technology that I'll start manifesting here. Mm. But yeah. as far as anybody's work, that really got me to really look inside and see what was going on there and when i worked there it changed my reality so i knew there was something to it so i ha i have a few talks with tom campbell on my channel and then other people i talk to it's just an uplifting you know uh chat but both y'all are so brilliant that i would love to chat with you guys again uh i don't think i i think we could come up with some new insights yeah 100 percent. wonderful so much. wonderful so yes much. definitely um so on that then let's take like so Tom Campbell's like my big toe, right? Yes. Uh, if yes. I remember correctly. So for like, Topher, for yourself, like the, you've got this blend of consciousness being primary, right? But then you've really grounded it in, uh, you know, some of this perfectly nested technologies and things. Have you have you got any sense of like, here's my working theory of everything? And Martin, I'd love for you to chip in as well. Like on, you know, have, you got, have you got any sense of that? Or is it a constantly emerging phenomenon? Well, Personally, we've been working and writing stuff down for like the last few weeks. I started working on this idea with my son, who's really smart. Mm. And he hit me up and he's like, we had a few goose pimple moments and thought, hang on a minute, there's something here. 
And then myself and Cheryl, we had a couple of brainstorming sessions, got some stuff done and realized that, okay, it's not correct. Um, it's a bit confused, but there's definitely something here. Um, so, um, and part of it was about the battery swap. But part of it was about the battery swap. In the reset. In the reset, you know. Um, and you were on the right lines with saying about the sun, Christopher. This is definitely the case. You know, that thing was yellow. Now it's, it was sodium, yes. now it's LEDs. You know, this thing's losing its strength. But, you know, we're going to, uh, you know, what I want to present and what I want to bring forward is what we think is going on. Um, it, it is a sort of encompassing theory. It will fit in the, if you do think along the lines of simulation, whether or not you think you're in Tron or, um, you know, <laughs> um whatever you know because tom's fields of uh of um, expertise is he's he's a, a simulationist but he's based on the fields of uh quantum mechanics and he's an astrophysicist so i had him on my channel but i found it incredibly frustrating because he was talking about like space stuff and stuff so, <laughs> but uh but he's got something you know especially about this this entropy and the way that you know that people interact and the attitude he, I, I've seen her in action so you know he doesn't give it all he's got little bits of truth I see what he's doing but he doesn't say it all um so I'm going to offer um a, a, an oh, idea for all of it and I'm going to come and see what's happening with you know what we are, are placing it spirituality the re reset but I'm going to try and um make it better you've really helped she's been taking notes chris okay oh great great <laughs> so, well, it's really interesting there's that... been so many sinks for what we've been talking about in the last 24 hours in this show it's just <laughs> been like an extension to it it's perfect just... and who we're working with you you kind of mentioned their name and then you know there's been a bunch of sinks and coincidences just throughout this talk yeah. and it's really interesting that this talk happened the next day after we were working on a couple of things about yeah. this system is a reset system with the and it just needs its batteries cleaned yeah. right it's, yes nothing horrible is happening here it just needs its battery cleaned it happens all the time and we're just here experiencing it but every all is well and everything's fine because everything is all well and there's no need to be feared of anything in this place yeah actually right anything. You know, what, what's right. everyone scared of? They're all scared of something that may lead to their death. <laughs> yeah. This seems yeah, to be most, yeah. Yeah. I find that most people are actually the, what they're most scared of is being alone. And so I work on a, my longest held profession is massage. Like I've been a polarity therapist, deep tissue, myofascial release person. Oh well, God. there's and a thing. That's weird. she's treating me for my fascia. I was on. Um, she had me. Um, I've got nerve damage. She had me wired up uh -huh. to a tens all night, and she's been giving me these patches, which are going on now. She's got to change to try and heal me because she's been understanding and explain all about the fascia because the my fascia. fields fascias and what a coincidence yeah. all of these bands are all. What's yeah? What's the link yeah. here? It, fascia. Well, fascia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same. yeah it's it's all Br bring us, bring us some, bring some gravy on this one because there's, like, I can't remember where I heard it, but it's like that fascia is essentially structured crystal water, right? Um, pretty, pretty much it is, but there is a protein sheath. Okay. And so the protein sheath, protein semi permeable protein structures water. Mm. So, so you wouldn't have the structured water without this very thin sheer protein sheath and this is the brilliance of the protein sheath in bioelectricity proteins are conductors yeah yeah so the way you could look at it is your shape your form is an antenna it's a it's a transmitter receiver our fascia is our memory because people say water is memory yeah, I do. And, that, and they're not they're not wrong with that. But how once again you transduce the information from the water has everything to do with the shape of your fascies. So us myofascial release people, what we do is we go through the body and we find where the trauma is held yeah. in the in the mechanism of the protein of the fasci. 
And what you'll see is the fascies, instead of having a coherence, they'll have an incoherence. Mm -hmm. They'll have binding. They'll have they'll be bound. Yes. Not and what that does is that discoheres or uncoheres the water that's near there. Huh. And and like likes like. So it steps and, down into the physical as the as the as the fascia in print the water, the water then imprints the more gross physical it's it's technically a positive feedback loop because okay. positive feedback loops aren't necessarily mean you feel better mm. a positive feedback loop is a reinforcement of the same thing at an amplitude yes so you have like let's say you're a little kid and you fall and you get a concussion on your head and you have you know all this stuff in your occiput region because the people around you didn't know how to handle it for whatever reason, there's trauma there. Now all the binding of the fascia there is structuring the water to attract the same type of event because oh. everything in oh. our life is a tuning fork. So that's why you have people that, you know, once they stub their toe, then they hit their toe a hundred times Yeah, is because now their toe is ringing at the frequency of pain. And so now life is like, oh, I, I'm going to supply you with that pain. I'm going to supply you with that pain. I'm going to supply um, you with that pain. Interestingly, she stood, she fell over last night in the back garden year and messed up her toe. <laughs> <laughs> but it was from a previous injury. It was from See, a and it just brought injury. me another one. Yeah, right. And get in there so, and work with that fascia. That weird. It, I can I can add something in here. Okay. Um. <laughs> so you know, uh, so if you was asking me before Martin jumped on, what like what was my background and stuff, and I've studied the work of Barbara Brennan, who is um, mm -hmm. she was a NASA trained physicist who from yes. birth could see the different layers of the human aura, um, and the human energy field. And so the first layer of the human energy field is the etheric layer. And when we get an injury, like it's, it's lines, it's, if you could see it, I, like I can't, but you know, others can. It's loads of lines of blue light. Like it's like a lattice grid of blue light. When we get a physical injury and we get scar tissue, it gets all fucked up and tangled, right? Right. Yes. And what you can do with energy healing work, and I guess like chance would do with the, with the um, bio tuning right? force. Yeah. Yes. Would, um, return, like basically untangle all the etheric lines of energy and return them to coherence that would then step down into the physical on the fascia. And then, so, um, yes, I need that. <laughs> and what they say is, of course, that in terms of the healing stuff that I've studied, is you can clear up the energy level, but if you haven't then taken care of the fascia, you've still got that same imprint in the memory. And so you're still going to have those same issues going on, even if you may have cleared the energy level. So you need to clear all three levels, which is the physical, the energetic, and the emotional. And if you can clear all three of those levels, then you've removed it from the system, as, as I understand. Pre precisely, because we came here to learn boundaries. We're in the plane of inertia. In the plane of inertia, we're actually learning what it feels like and what, what the sensation of resistance is. Yes. Yes. So within the sensation of resistance, within the sensation of understanding boundaries and friction and all of these types of things, pain is essential because pain is a signal from our environment that a boundary has been breached. Huh. Yeah. And your body will hold that, that signal in the fascia until the fascia itself is back into a coherent state. Yeah. Like bo body work saved my life. I, I mean, I, I'm being a little bit dramatic, but during my football career, yeah. I was injured, I injured, that. injured, injured, and getting yeah. into yoga and then getting really good body work. I was a new man with no drugs, like mm -hmm. with nothing. And then that's why I devoted my life to giving that to mm -hmm. other people because there was nothing that I had come across. I mean, I had, I had the top back doctor in the United States telling me that I wouldn't be able to walk by age 30. Right. And he would just sit there and give me prednisone and give me all these anti-inflammatories, mm -hmm. wanting to do a lower back fusion, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And within a, just a few months of doing yoga and getting really good body work and excellent bone setters doing their magic on me, I don't have that problem. Yeah. Well done, yeah. And fascia can be healed. And absolutely, it all can be healed. 
And, and that's the myth that goes around in a lot of people's minds. Oh, I've hurt myself. I'm going to have this for the rest of my life. And that's not true. We just it's don't have true. the right modalities to treat these we're, injuries with. And also then we're imprinting, we're imprinting the water and the, the with the literally the kind of sonic imprint of I'm going to have this for the rest of my life. Yes. And we, we, we make that true, right? Yeah. Um, I'm going to throw something out there that's oh. tangentially connected, but I'm, I'm curious, right? So one of the things that I've also explored is urine therapy. Yes. Um, and it's kind of been striking me that like, we urine is um it's a plasma ultra filtrate right so it's like it's a distilled water but it's also like a yes. vortex vortex charged yes. water because it comes out of our Binning. barrel so to speak in a vortex motion and, I, and i'm does. just wondering like for you to speculate is it like what might because we know that it's a super powerful healing modality like there's something about the fact that it's this kind of structured plasma water and it's been vortex charged as well that feels very significant and that, but i can't necessarily join all those dots okay oh well i've right. i've done it i mean yeah. it it works like it, it solves every single problem you'll have if you cycle with it yeah. like i i've done a i've done a five-day cycle with only urine moles fall off your skin you lose whatever excess weight you're carrying. Yep. You'll find addictions drop. It's literally like we, we're given everything we need, like yep. literally everything. Yep. You know, and growing up in Florida, we would always like be on the beach and like stepped on barb fish or get like stingrays and stuff like that. Yeah. Pee on it immediately. Yeah. The pain goes away. I massage, right? My hands are always necessary that I have like perfect hands, but I also build huh. and I build with cement. And when anybody that's built with cement, you'll find that it's extremely caustic and it will rip your hands apart. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do after a day of building with cement is I'll soak my hands in my own urine. I'll have zero abrasions on my hands. Mm -hmm. I could cut my hands up. I could run my hands on a cheese grater if I put them in urine, my own urine for oh. an hour, they'll be healed. Yeah. Hmm. Your libido show, as well. Show, show, yeah. Show, show yeah. me, show me what else does that. Yeah. Yeah. So there's something in this for sure. Yeah. Give it a, yeah. give it a try. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah take the piss. If this is, yeah, Martin, if this is new to you, like it's, um... no, it's not new to me. I, I, it's not new to me. I've been like 10 years in truth. It's so not new to me. I've got a few <laughs> friends like Dave Murphy who does it, and I got a few friends. We were sitting with one earlier that it dabbles. Um, yeah, it's just been um, something it's for me. That... me. It's not for me. I don't. I, I I feel actually like I'm fit at the most for like my age, and yeah, yeah. I think it's like fab. So I don't feel any need to do like absolutely anything really, except for my diet and my weed. But um, yeah, I, I'm not going to do it mm. at all. So in in this this like we we mentioned that all you know all will be well right yeah and yet there are like there is going to be some changes right that the that the 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 battery is going to get cleaned right mm -hmm. so for for both of you have you got any sense of like is there anything on a practical level that people should slash could do yes yeah, or is it literally that just like set. I anchor in trust. <laughs> Smash their television set. <laughs> Not me with fear. The thing is, this is the time now to get spiritually aligned. This is the crossroads, you know. Make it or break it. There's not a lot of time left. Get it, get it right, you know. Um, some people are just not going to be able to get it. You know, people say that they're NPCs or what have you. I wouldn't say that. You know, I'm not going to look people for that. But I'm going to say that some people are just too far brainwashed to ever unplug. They would fight um, to death. To protect the yes. state paradigm you yes. know so that will yeah. always be there but the way and the nature of consciousness is there will be um, a, a critical mass moment when you know even if this reset happens well you know we, our souls could be just being dealt the physical sense we might not know shit all about it you know what i mean so um i feel that you know a lot of people are getting really really good um, but the dark entities are getting really spiteful and lost and just like you know the internet is awash with hateful people i've noticed and it's got worse since covid you know they've gone a bit more spiteful haven't they so 
and that will all be like snow plowed through with the new you know <laughs> this place is going to sort the wheat from the chaff this is a pet this is a cleansing this is a purification process yeah and me and maybe like you christopher i can't be digging all of that imperfection going on <laughs> <laughs> and one yeah. thing that i would say about everything going on is waking up first thing in the morning and thinking positive thoughts intentionally thinking the things that bring you into the resonance of love those thoughts will resonate throughout your day and a lot of times it circumvents those negative things happen to, happening to you because you know you notice you wake up in the morning you stump your toe then the next thing breaks then you go out in your car and there's a flat tire and it just keeps on going well yeah. you're you're doing it so yeah. if you do it the other way and think positive thoughts intentionally and watch what you're thinking, you know, because that's what I feel is creating my reality is what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling. And, you know, there's some other things. It's reflecting my fears. You know, there's still a little bit of that stuff yeah. in there. Mm -hmm. But if you spend your day trying to maintain the vibration of love, you know, so y'all were calling it love flow state. It's the, I think it's the same thing. It is. And so first thing in the morning. Set a set chase, a, chase them demons away, chase them demons away, mm -hmm. and get on a positive vibration. That is one of the biggest things I and think remember, that'll help. Remember not to be feared or anything, keep reminding yourself because you get some sort of reset going on. Over yeah, there. yeah, it's just a reset, just getting our batteries there's, cleaned. There's, it's gonna be okay. There's <laughs> another clue to the battery uh, running out is that for some reason, this system needs to close us down for half the day, you know, or, or for eight hours in a 24 hour period where it's like the system hasn't got the energy reserves anymore to keep the whole thing going has it so that we're being shut down this sleep thing this thing we're practicing here it wasn't practiced according to the narrative in the past they used to have two sleeps they used to go to bed early seven o'clock wake up get on with daytime functions in the night and then go back to bed at three o'clock um this this sleep pattern now that we're doing you know and all of this weird stuff they do with changing times you know to keep us all set on circadian rhythms all of our part of the agenda uh, to keep us offset, yeah, they definitely do. So the that. system is trying to conserve energy right now, yeah, because it doesn't yes. have enough because it needs its batteries cleaned, yeah. And so mm. that's showing in all these weird things that's going on that weren't in the history books, it, and it needs, and it's just a weird time to be. It, We're it, being it, clean. It, <laughs> it needs a Joe cell. It needs a Joe cell to give it a little boost. Yeah, a, mo a mojo cell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Mojo. We use that. Can we use that? <laughs> that's really good. Uh, yes Thank well you. i i really like that i think that that those are great words to to live by um you know i kind of live a permaculture life so the, the way i look at it is take care of zone zero and zone one <laughs> really really well and then that will create a resonant, yeah that will create a resonant pattern yeah because yeah. as, as all of us are adults we know that we can't we can't do anything for anyone else yes in reality it's everybody is on their own path yeah. all we can do is be authentic to what actually opens our heart yeah. and do the most that we can to resonate that and then <laughs> it all the rest of it's god's work yeah it is you're on yeah. your own kids you saw it out <laughs> yeah yeah it's an inside job it's, it's an, an inside, inside job, job. It is. It, yeah yeah it's like the let go of any savior complex you have mm -hmm. because 100 yeah the say the savior complex is the road to ruin yeah mm, it you is know, you know what happens to saviors they get crucified i'm okay <laughs> they not get yeah, crucified you know, you know? that goes down yeah. <laughs> you're right there judge you know well i i mean i work with so many codependent people and they don't even know that they're doing it they don't yeah. even know what co they don't even know what codependency is They'll be trying to tell me about them, but they use the terminology "we" yes. and "our." Yeah. And you. And no I'm one. like, I'm like, uh, 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 come on, get back. What yeah. are you actually? What's what's happening yeah. for you? No, we're talking to you. <laughs> I'm the yeah. third person. <laughs> and and uh, so many people don't even understand that they they become codependent with the black monolith that's in front of them. Mm -hmm. Their emotional state, they don't have an emotional distancing from from the emotional generator that's the digital emotional generator mm. that's in front of them. 
And so the, it would behoove people to, to actually have a practice where they can be the fourth wall. They can yeah. actually generate some space between in their mental and emotional body and just witness this stuff. Because if you have the capacity to witness from a neutral state, you'll be much just, cleaner than if you didn't yep yeah we do practice that we mm. just the, the, just observing not even interacting with it just observing just watching, observance just observing that is it yeah. Yeah. watch yeah. this look what we can do look what we can do <laughs> we're not cocky with it we're humble but we are magical beings and we are do manifest some really beautiful things yeah you know things that Overall, we, you know, on on that you know i heard you talk about sun gazing yeah. Yes. I, this idea of witnessing, right? And I, so I was like, okay, well, you know, to, Tofu's not an idiot. Let me give this a try. And so there I was, and I was like, oh, okay, I'm not gone blind yet. But m so much of my system, because of the, oh, you can't stare at the sun. I was witnessing as I was looking at the sun, my system freaking out, going, you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing this. I'm like, and let's breathe. Can I, can I modify what you just said? Yeah, go for it. Your, your system was not dysregulated. Your your mind yes. was yeah hundred percent yeah exactly it, it, it was unbelievable right. to witness and as as I allow myself to just breathe the sun the, the the kind of the ball that I was looking at whatever it is came completely into focus yes um and my system just got, uh, or my mind calmed and I was yeah, like just, okay now I'm in we, resonance and harmony this is we amazing just, ball. Um, we, were, we were just saying earlier about exactly the same thing about sun gazing and pondering whether or not in a previous civilization they nourished themselves through the sunlight that a hundred percent yeah yeah it's all and it's all no told toilet. they're tr telling us in the movie superman the original superman they inverted yeah. it we we were the ones that got all the superpowers from the sun we mm. were the uber mensch yes and they inverted it to make some alien from out there in space yeah. came yeah. here and had that. It was the exact opposite. Yeah. We were the ones that didn't shit. Like you look at all these incredible antiquitech buildings. There were no outhouses. Yeah. No toilets. You look, no toilets. We, cause we were literally running. We were in perfect energetic harmony with our environment. Yeah. Yes. You can tell by the consciousness of the buildings. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm a builder. It's amazing, I, and, and it's, it, it echoes nature as well. These old buildings, it's, there's you know the natural it's, geometry in them. It's astounding, and I, I've I've pushed back against certain people that have uh, double backed and like started saying, "Oh no, this could have been done," and there's guilds that you know hide all this stuff, and I'm like, "Okay, let's say that's all true." Where is the time and the energy to do something like this? Yeah. Okay, I've built for very wealthy people where money is not a big deal. None of them have told me to build a 20 fucking foot tall door <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with, yeah. with, with 10 hinges made out of wrought iron steel. Yeah. yeah. Or with giant polygonal blocks that just there's no way that and, none of them and, and hey, the door hey, handle up here somewhere. Hey, hey, what I'm desiring right now is I, I want windows <laughs> above my 30 story fucking tall bookcase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I that know that are that that are that are um I want stained glass and I want stained glass that is like two millimeters thick mm. that can't be reproduced. No, yeah, get yeah, the yeah. fuck out of here. It was a different consciousness yes it was a different, different consciousness. Yeah. it different was a mind. different yeah. era mm -hmm. it's not it's not the human that we are it's not oh nothing like us yeah no no no, no. so i i, I want to chip in on this as well though because you know you talk about not shitting and stuff like this like we <laughs> like so i'm coming off the back of a 50 day um distilled liquids fast right nice um and so I'm within a community where they're exploring the whole kind of breatharianism stuff, right? Um, and th there is, you know, back in the 20s and 30s, the science was being done that our cells genuinely are immortal. That if they are put in the right conditions, they will just yes. keep staying oh, yeah. still alive. They are yeah. sustained by cosmic rays. Yeah. And, you know, I'll be real with you. I've had the experience like day 40, I ran a mile and a half and I just I didn't even think about it. 
Um, yeah. I, and I, I, I was in the sea. It, the sun was shining on me. And I was, I was like, holy, f-, like I am genuinely being charged up here, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Recently, the last kind of couple of weeks, I've started eating food again. And I, you know, on day 40, I also ran a mile and a half and I boshed out 10 pull-ups, you know, no problem at all, right? Mm-hmm. I can barely do one pull-up now as I am. So I've shifted over from almost gotcha. like an elect- being fueled by electricity and cosmic rays. Gotcha. Yeah. to burning or calories or whatever and it's you know it's the different fuel source like mm-hmm. i yeah. i've mm-hmm. i've gone perhaps from being um run on implosion to being run on explosion and the it is night and day difference um so i think mm-hmm. that we haven't necessarily lost that way it's just been so conditioned that you must have three square three square meals a day eight hours of sleep because by the way day 40 day day, day 50 two or three hours of sleep and i like i was a I was on it. Um, so that there is, our potentials are just vastly more different. And, you know, so if you use the word inverted, one of the things I've taken from your podcast, but it was already being seeded. Martin, I've heard you talk about this. The, like, the, the level of inversion is just mind blowing. Mm-hmm. Basically, everything that you might see on a quote unquote mainstream, it's all inverted. Inverted. And inverted. Uh-huh. The consciousness yes. is dropped. And so its output is junk. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's- yeah. <laughs> and this is what occurs is at the end of the cycle, the inertia becomes terminal. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know and whether so- you've seen my series when I talked about, you know, the real uh, meaning of um, order out of chaos, you know, that we're inert now, but there is a time when the magnets are not so aligned and everything becomes a chaotic. And then, you know, a mountain is not still anymore, you know, right. The whole thing comes flying apart. Yeah. 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 That makes sense to me. Yeah, me that makes too. sense to me. Yeah. What a wonderful talk, you guys. Yeah, man. <laughs> it has been wonderful. Yeah. Martin, Martin I'm I'm very, very pleased to meet you. Uh, oh, I've it's been, lovely to meet you, Chris. You've got a great I, vibration. Yeah. Really I've awesome. been I've been admiring your work from afar and, and sending people your way. And um okay. I'm just so happy that there's a there's another voice out there that's like, hey. This vibrational tech is a real thing. It is a real thing. We practice yeah. it. We live it. Yeah. You know, you know, yeah. Well, it's there's a lot more to come up with this. So it hasn't reached its zenith yet. I just know that we're we're just touching upon it. This science is going to be. We're going to be thinking about ways we never expected to think. This is. It just occurs to me as a perhaps a closing thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> the, you know, Tofu, like the, the, you, you shared some images of bamboo and stuff, right? And you mentioned that. Well, let's come back to ourselves right mm-hmm. that we have hollow bones that we know are piezoelectric yeah mm-hmm. so we have we have the scepter and what do we have here we have the orb yeah. with some <laughs> perfectly <laughs> okay. okay and so that you know when we say we you know it's we are the universe there's something about that we are yeah. we are the scepter and the orb I like that our bones so are like is... batteries anyway they're sealed containers you know <laughs> sealed on the end you got the marrow in the middle they're, they're just like a battery <laughs> yeah cell. Anyway, they're they're technically a superconductor. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. When you look at, excuse me, not superconductor, they're a supercapacitor. Mm. So this is something that uh, I don't know if you any of you guys know who Tom Barnett is and I, but we've we've done a couple series of conversations about using our body as the orgone accumulator. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then and then changing our surroundings. We can with, do it. Like, oh, I'm gonna do it now. I'm gonna reach so, outside. Look at the sun. So just so you know, a core tenant of Raja Yoga before they Americanized it, because Raja Yoga was the was the school of the Siddha of the cities that where you actually had you you could control the twelve humors. You could control like this this plato of existence was plato yes yeah and love that and one of the core tenets was that your spine is the axis mundi no, because we, we thought it anyway didn't we you know, for mundi. for as much as we think we know what someone else is experiencing and when we love somebody that's we become resonant with them mm-hmm. but even when we're resonant with somebody we're never really going to experience their world even no. if they describe it to us, yeah. even if they write it down, even if they're like a gifted movie maker, we will never see the world the way they see it. 
even if we're resonant with them. Yeah, no, no, no. So what that does for our system is you understand that each one of us are living in our own world. Yeah. And in when you understand that you're in direct jurisdiction with the creator, the Shishumna, the energy that's that that runs all the way through the plane of inertia and up to the metaphysical etheric state, mm-hmm. that is one chord. And that chord oh. is your axis mundi. Mm. And it really is because no matter what anybody says, the sun and the moon Shouldn't go on a 13 mile arc around you, wherever you are. This place is much more. And that's why I would love to talk to Jason and, and talk to him about the whole nature of the holographic aspect of this yeah. existence, because I don't look at it as like we're in a human holograph. We're in God's hologram. <laughs> and in God's hologram, it's very, very advanced. And, but the there's a trick in it. The trick is we actually think we're experiencing what other people are experiencing. Yeah. But we're not. But we're not. No. We are not. And no. we never have been. And we never will be. Will be. No, everybody sees this place differently. Every single one of us. We try to so make the- it look like you know we're having a shared experience because we are a social creature and we like to group up and stuff right so we we trick each other by thinking oh yeah i know what's going on here and we all sync up that's not what's happening and that's the fun that's the fun part of it because i look at it like we're god's subjective wing god created it and it's objectively his creation or its creation but it didn't want to know exactly how it how it was going to be that would be boring yeah so we're made in the image and likeness so we can give a subjective review of the creation. Mm-hmm. You're brilliant, Chris. You know that, don't yeah, you? Yeah, <laughs> you're really brilliant. You're really brilliant. So, so that's why I would like to talk to Jason because I think each hologram, it's not a universal hologram. Hmm. There's only one hologram. <laughs> that I, love each, it. I love it. Yeah. That each one of us is experiencing. Yeah. You need to. But it, we need to. See, you need to contact him. Get it. You know, get on. Because because if you know anything that I, I mean, I don't know much about computers, but I talk to lots of nerds that know a lot about computer programming. Yeah. When I gave them that model of of how how to program, they all like went super nerd on me. Because that simplified the programming in their mind. Maybe because. Easier. It's like it, I forget the the movie that uh, just came out last year where they're all in one big simulation. <laughs> and when you're all in one big simulation, you're having to deal with all these variables of interactivity between each of each of the beings <laughs> in the simulation of the of the game. Yeah, I see that, Phil. Hmm. But check this out. What if all you had to do is have one simulation? Her quote unquote being, but within the simulation, all you did was program that being to think that it had the same simulation as all, all the rest of the beings. <laughs> <laughs> that would make it interesting, wouldn't it? But that would also make it so much simpler and efficient. And the one thing I know about nature is she's <laughs> fucking efficient. Oh, yeah. 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 So she's super efficient. Land this, this hologram model that you're sharing with this idea that we are the spontaneous genius of God. I'd love to see how those two things... It all comes back to the perfect nesting. This is why I'm so in love with Martin's work is because when you know how a fractal works and when you know how a yeah. hologram works, this is a fractal hologram. The way a hologram works at any point, at any part of the plate that you cut it can, mm-hmm. has the entire hologram within yeah, it. yeah it's inside it yeah that's right yeah and i've done massage for 26 years the very first thing that i ask a client is what their birthday is because they have the maseroth within them mm-hmm. does that mean that there's fucking stars out there influencing their body no <laughs> it's because they're a little cut of the of the plate of the hologram biological hologram that's right in front of me that's a fractal of the whole. Oh my God, yeah. 
given the time, the time, because this is the plane of inertia. So we have to deal with time. Yeah. There's that just that little cut of boundary and time that's bam right there. And the whole entire zodiac reflects that in their body. Because in truth, the zodiac isn't out there. Mm. The Maserat yeah. isn't out there. It's right here. Yeah. yeah. In fact, all of the exterior world's in here. <laughs> Precisely. Yeah. I know, because all is mind. Yeah. Right. Yay. <laughs> You got to it. <laughs> We're doing it, guys. We're yeah. doing it. Yeah. Yes. yes. Well, <laughs> yeah. Oh, thanks, Chris, man. It's good to meet you, man. Maybe we could do this. It's very nice meeting you, too. Yeah. yeah. Yes, please. But yeah. I, don't, yeah. I was thinking, you know, I wonder whether, you know, Martin in the future, like, um, you know, if this format has worked well, we'll bring Jason in. Like, right now we've got three people on the screen. There's a fourth space that we could bring in. Sure. Sure. Um, and, you know, like, because... Uh, so far, I was thinking, like, I love the way that um, uh, Chance's vibrance work, that you've got those kind yes. of those different flows and bounces. And it, it struck me that perhaps um, you and I bring different elements for, you know, that we, we love this flow state and we've got that background of kind of playing sports and stuff to then be able to kind of almost like feed Martin and Jason some yeah. you know, prompts that can, you know, flow with that synergy. So um, if that's yeah. a format that could work, um, let's set that up for the future. That yeah, well, we'll try to do that. Yeah, I've worked with Jason. Now, that would be absolutely fantastic. And yeah. I know he dig you guys. You're, oh, you're yeah. both super smart. He, yeah, he yeah. hasn't got time for people who just don't know the things. He's just, yeah. he finds it frustrating. But yeah, yeah, you two guys. You know your stuff. You know your and stuff yeah, y'all would do good with Jason. Well, oh, good. It's been it's been one of our, you know, uh, I was saying stuff, right? I've, I've been geeking out on his stuff. And that's how I was like, oh my God, I've got to get Martin and Toph together. Because <laughs> like, he, he was there that he's been yeah. geeking out on Martin's stuff. Um, you know, like I, you know, I've had spent a lot of time, you know, checking out Jason's stuff as well. So I just, yeah. there is, there's something about the overall, uh, like collective wisdom that's emerging through this, because what, you know, we feel the same, yeah. what, what Owen Benjamin's doing, what, um, Chance is doing, like you, you said, like Chance is one of the best podcasts out there. And I'd agree, like some of his stuff that he brings to is so awesome, right? There is this incredible, like Stellium seven as well. Like his, like there's something right. about yeah. this podcast wisdom sharing space right now that is emerging, that's unfolding, incredibly valuable wisdom. Um, and because the it's the meeting of the mind. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Chris. All the pieces coming together. It's a meeting of the mind. Yeah. That's not mind. It's the that's... meeting of the mind. 100%. And it was all of it. And yeah. I introduced Martin to Jason, and that's where that collaboration come from. So yeah. it, it, I was just part of the one mind. I didn't do anything great. It was just supposed to be that way. Yeah. And it unfolded the way it did. Really? So it, nobody's doing it. We're all, it's let's, the one thing. Let's look at how this has been reflected to us, right? When, as soon as Topher mentioned Gurdjieff, you guys both lost your fecal matter, right? Um, <laughs> but there is there's this kind of grounding in like Schauberger in Wilhelm Reich and the fact yeah, that yeah, we exactly. mentioned Gurdjieff yeah. and it pops off. To, like So there's something about the, that, that there is this meeting of the one mind. And when we get these sinks reflected back to us to let us know, hey, we're in the flow here. There will oh, be yeah. many, many sinks. Yeah, in this many for us. sinks. For Literally, us. you're extending the conversation which we just finished. <laughs> we were just having. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not even joking. It's just so. Too, so, too can easy. I bring up one last thing? Sure. Yeah, because because yeah. there's something that um, because we're talking about the mind, and so I've had like three or four nights of not sleeping really all that well. And then like two nights ago, I was let known about all the, the mischief that's happening over in the Middle East. Yeah. yeah. Wh whether it's real or not or whatever, the, the thing is that the, the psychic space has been disturbed. And I talked to Owen yesterday and he's like, yeah, I haven't been sleeping. Every single person I've talked to has been saying that their psychic space has been disturbed. Right. And I am, and I am somebody that actually looks at the luminaries because I see the luminaries as just the metaphysical extension of ourself. It's not like something out there. It's just mm. like, it's just the perimeter of, of us. Yeah. And there is a real dis a disturbance in the force. There is something that has occurred or is about to occur that I right. feel is is pretty massive are you guys are you guys tuning into right. that well, i you... haven't slept the last couple of nights but i haven't seen absolutely anything above the wall period 
So, dude, I'm telling you, it's affecting us all at, at a psychic level. Like the way I was feeling is because I'll be restful, like my body will be restful. But in my mind isn't thinking about a conflict or anything like that. But it's no. just like there's so much activity going say, on. Dude, my mind's just can't. What have I said to you? I just can't cl calm my mind down enough to sleep. Got so much going on in there. Yeah. So much activity. And it's been the last two nights. I went to sleep six o'clock in the morning the night before last, or four o'clock this morning. And I was really dog tired as well. It's the collective yeah. panicking again. And <laughs> when they panic, I don't pay any yeah, attention to it. it and I tune it out. It I don't look at anything on the news when they're doing uh, this thing. Uh, and <laughs> I think the collective, once they get a hold of a big fear porn thing, they take off with it and it can be disturbing. One thing I noticed with all of these wars they show us on the television is you always see a panoramic from a bird's eye perspective of the city. And then you'll see a big cloud of dust or smoke come up and there's your war. And it was the same for Syria. And, and you know, they, they you know, Syria, Syria was getting bombed shitless. And then you see Damascus on one of the white camps and everything's just chocolate. Everyone's having a great time. Nothing's going on. I'm not saying people ain't getting killed, but I'm just saying this narrative, right, is just a spin to keep everyone distracted with the elections coming up next year. It's all bullshit. Because something else is big and it's coming. We all feel mm -hmm. it. We all know it. We had the same before Rona. Everybody knew something was coming bigger than 9-11. Did they not? We were talking about it in 2019. Everyone felt it, guys. And then out of nowhere, the whole world gets locked down. You can't even make that up. Yeah? Mm -hmm. well, that's just a test bed. That is nothing to do with what they were up to. I don't care what they say. I think that's a tester to see how they can control the masses for when there's some environmental changes, which are well, definitely... Yeah, discussed. what's your take on this stuff? Have you got anything like that, you know, you've been chatting to people and obviously, you know, your friends with Ole, da Ole Damagard and stuff, like someone who's super clued into all of this. Yeah, have, you got, have you got any steer on what, what, what might be unfolding? Uh, the big thing that my circles talk about is the the... They're running cover for the switch over of the the financial system. Yeah. yeah so yeah. yeah. As far as I understand how Jubilees work, Jubilees don't necessarily just work by just getting rid of the debt and saying, hey, everybody's equal. A lot of times Jubilees happen by them switching a financial system. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so we okay. we this cycle, like this first eclipse that you know, goes through on the 14th on yep. Saturday. We'll be watching it. That's in Texas, the, sure. I know yeah. that's that that's actually that's uh, when because that's the end of the Jubilee year. Yeah. And so I'm looking at that and I'm like, wow, there's a lot of syncs with that. OK, so I know keep an eye on that. I know the big I know the big solar eclipse happens May or excuse me, April 8th next year. But usually, historically, the eclipses, the occulting of the sun or the occulting of the moon, they have a lot to do with uh, a, a transit. There's a massive transit. Mm. Um, and it just happens to be at the end of the Hebrew calendar. So mm. the end of the Hebrew calendar when it comes to the Jubilee year. What's it called? The Shemesh, Shemesh, that's what it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Shemitah. Uh, the Shemitah. Mm. Yeah, so... And so is there uh, anything in terms of like us holding certain intention to mitigate the like the, the worst negativity that might unfold or like is it just a part of allowing just just, just access the synchro mystic aspect of yourself yeah yeah the synchro mystic yeah. aspect of yourself where you're actually always in the flow like you're actually you don't you're not anchored to the notion that fiat gives you anything what you're actually anchored to is that your real provider is always ever present. Yes. Your, yeah. your benefactor, your provider is always there. You might not recognize the language that they're speaking to you in. Yeah. Right. But they're, they're there one way or another. They're there. I love that. Yeah. 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 And we're never without it. We're never without it. I love yeah. that. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. That feels you're so welcome. good to know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, what spot? What spot to finish it, um, <laughs> dear ones? Like this, like I, I hoped that we might have a conversation like this. And with all my heart, thank you so much. With so much love to you all um, for the way you've yeah. showed up. Um, thank you to whatever 
the great mystery, the, the great love that flows through all things. Thank you for um, hosting us in this way. And again, just to reiterate that intention that may the greatest love for all beings flow from this conversation for whoever hears it, whenever they hear it, wherever they hear it, may it support them to remember their greatness and their truth and their love. Thank you so much, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, George. I'm sure it'll help it's a lot of people listening to this. There's so much good information in it. Really helpful. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> awesome, you. everyone. Take Thanks, care. Chris. Uh, all right. See you guys soon. Awesome Bye -bye. to you. Hope we talk again. Yes. We will. We, we will. definitely will. Soon. All right. Okay. Lots of love, folks. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Keep up. Ta-ra. <laughs>